Uh, hot take. I actually think these rapier nerfs were the best thing that could have happened to the weapon. Um, I've been making videos on this weapon for over a year now, and uh, it is without a doubt my favorite weapon in the game. Uh, but at the same time, it has been the most polarizing weapon in the game, and I think the reason for that is because of how strong the defensive capabilities of the rapier were combined with light armor. And the fact that both of those took a huge hit this patch, I think is why a lot of people are feeling a little bit iffy with the rapier right now. But I would argue that it is probably the strongest that it's ever felt in the game currently. Um, and that's solely because of how weak light armor feels. Uh, I feel like I can just absolutely annihilate light armor builds now in rapier. And then the buff that uh, Riposte got by gaining an empower combined with uh, the great sword's ability to um, rend and open up targets. I feel like this is the most damage I've been able to do with the rapier um, since launch pretty much. But we have a couple of duels. Uh, I got into a bunch of really, really good 1v1s. And uh, we're going to take a look at just how the rapier is feeling because um, I think people are still stuck in a lot of the ways you were able to just get away with making the mistakes that you were able to do before. But we have uh, a fight here against a light hatchet uh, hammer user. Um, we land the parry into the higher percentage uh, option there, which um, nets us that really, really big backstab. Um, we're going to talk about the higher percentage parries here a lot in the video, but um, taking a look at the second fight, this is earlier on. Uh, I'm still using Tondo, my greatsword is not leveled up, but uh, again, we go for the higher percentage uh repost there what i mean by that is you want to try and use it during animations um, a lot of the time people just use it when they feel like they're in trouble uh, as soon as they kind of get low and somebody's behind them uh, they throw it out but uh, we manage to dodge the first sun there or we get hit by it, excuse me but then we block the shockwave um, but we end up taking quite a bit of damage and we make the mistake that i was just talking about there um, which is throwing out the parry with no real plan uh, to use it with before or after. Um, the really difficult thing about the hatchet setup is that he is going to negate a lot of these staggers that we were able to put out onto him. Um, we managed to uh, actually land a really big chunk of damage with the offensive uh, switch there, but he lands a beautiful turnaround hammer stun on us and just gets a beautiful combo and finishes uh, us off there. Actually, not too many mistakes made, but uh, he just turns around and gets a really, really beautiful finish. Um, now, we've talked about the kind of issues going on right now. I tried to dodge there, but it just didn't go off. And we almost just straight up die right away. But I try to see if I can salvage this fight if I can. We go for the Calamity in the corner to buy myself a little bit of time. And we land the parry, but as I mentioned, that hatchet is going to break him out of a lot of the CC that we are able to put out on this build. And he breaks out of the parry and just continues that aggression. Um, with out of stem, I don't know why I went for the cannon there and he's able to finish us off. Um, Hatchet is a pretty tough opponent for the rapier to fight just because of the fact that uh, they can break out a lot of out of a lot of those CCs. But again, high percentage repost into the stun there. We know he's going to break out, so we make some distance, land the calamity into the berserker rush this time, so we negate a lot of the damage and we put him on the back foot right away. Um, playing a lot more patient this time. Um, we were playing way, way too aggressive against a hatchet that can just break out of all of our stuns. Um, but he doesn't have the um, Berserk to break out. We again land the Repost and uh, we're able to finish off a much, much cleaner fight this time. Against especially another light armor player, um, you can see what I mean by how much more damage we're going to be able to put out. Uh, but it also means the fights are going to be a lot faster. Um, but we have another 1v1 here against a medium, I believe, armor, spear, and rapier player. And um, we're going to get to kind of look at a lot more of uh, the mistakes that we end up making here. One of my personal uh, issues that um, I need to actually actively think about when I'm playing with the rapier is I oftentimes play too aggressive. Um, and with, with the way light armor feels right now, um, one mistake means death. Uh, so... That's going to be one of the big themes of these fights. He does land the sweep there, as you saw, but we get a beautiful guard point uh, into the perforate there, which blocks the entire thing. But again, we're playing super aggressive on this guy and just pretty much jumping into his sweeps. 
Um, we managed to space out the perforate and land the great sword attack. That's one of the things I love about the great sword is the range we have on it. But again, we have our parry up. Our evade is about to come up. Um, but we literally jump into a position to where we not only can't see the actual animation for sweep, um, but we just kill ourselves because of the fact that we're playing too aggressive. For me personally, the reason why I play that aggressive on the rapier is because of the fact that I'm confident enough in my ability to react to things um, for that to be a viable playstyle. Uh, but that's one of the things that you kind of have to adapt to right now with the way the game feels is you can't reliably react to things. Um, so with that being the case, it's uh, it puts more focus on things like making sure that your parry timing and your evade timing um, is that much more on point. But we get into another little 1v1 with uh, the same player. And again, we're going to try to see if we can uh, do a better job of uh, playing slower this time. Because like I said, you just can't reliably uh, react to things right now. We do a good job of avoiding uh, the damage from the perforate with our Calamity. And we uh, actually get a good dodge on the sweep there. He does manage to land a nice little counter parry. Um, but doesn't really follow up on it. And... Uh, Again, spamming shift is not really going to help us out as uh, we can't react to that sweep. That one though, we actually just straight up took and uh, we get um, the fat second hit to the head. So especially against medium and heavy armor builds, uh, you have to um, play your timing and play your abilities so much more in order for you to uh, come out on top in those situations. The way before, and especially now with the recovery frames that Repost has gotten, uh, the way that you counter a bad Repost is by, again, thinking about the next step. Now, you jump back into him here, manage to land a beautiful stagger, which forces him into the perforate. And going back to those uh, high percentage Reposts, um, people by now are fully aware of how to actually avoid Repost, but in an an ability like Perforate or Shockwave or any of these longer animation abilities, um, that is when you put yourself into a situation to where the repost can't fail. Otherwise, having Evade up to get out of the repost that doesn't land this is your other way of kind of uh, dealing with that. But we get into the last little 1v1 with this player here, um, avoid his repost and the server, I guess, allows us to actually react to the sweep this time. So we managed to land a huge amount of damage onto him. Calamity counter the sweep. So we're actually cycling our defensive options a lot better this time instead of playing uh, just super aggressive. And we have him very, very low on the back foot, kind of forced to uh, run a little bit here. And uh, with the cherry on top, we just evade the last sweep there for the kill. For a majority of those earlier fights with this player... Um, the server definitely wasn't agreeing with us, but you can't become a better player by uh, just blaming the server. So we are trying to just actively look for ways and mistakes that we're making in our gameplay to get better. And uh, we managed to finish out the player at the end there. And for these last set of duels here, I believe this is even earlier on um, in my time playing the patch. I think we we're running like a 500 gear score uh, great sword just to get that Calamity counter perk. But these fights are a lot longer, so they um, are going to do a much better job of showing uh, a lot of these rapier fundamentals. But we have a fight against a medium great sword hammer player. Um, as we kind of get jumped on there, we land the parry uh, against that higher percentage shockwave. Um, put up the calamity to block out that second hit, so we negate a lot of damage right there. And uh, we, with most of his CCs out, we're going to see if we can go ahead and play the aggressive, but not play it too aggressive you see as soon as that hammer stun comes out there we are kind of aware for it this time and we uh do a better job of evading and not getting caught by that we land the gravity stun or the riposte in his gravity well he does catch us with that uh shockwave but we have him on a very very low amount of hp um again just being aware of this fact that he has the threat with those stuns and uh not putting ourselves into situations where we can't dodge because of the fact that we have too many actions queued up um, we have pretty much avoided all of his uh, big stuns so far in this fight, and um, 
are doing a pretty good job. Again, dodging that second stun. I try to go for a dodge there, but because we are in the middle of an attack and have another one queued up, we can't dodge out of the stun there. But um, doing a much, much better job this time in these fights of playing uh, a mixture of an offensive and passive playstyle. Uh, Hammer is a very dangerous weapon, um, but if you are aware of it, it's a very easy one to uh, avoid the stuns of. But uh, trying to keep up the pressure on this player here. Um, the good thing about Rapier is uh, we have options for Gravity Well. So as long as we have either uh, Evade or a Repost up, we usually don't feel too, too scared to be in there. Time the Calamity perfect right there for the Shockwave. We pretty much have an answer for every one of his stuns uh, with this build and uh, a really, really, really clean first fight there. I think it was the fact that we weren't in Brimstone why these fights felt so smooth, but it's also why I'm not too terribly worried about Light Armor or Rapier um, because assuming the game feels good, uh, I believe that these play styles and builds will still be good, but caught in the gravity well there, we go for the naked repost. But we have the evade to get out. So we go for the repost and then we chain our evade and our dodge iframe to get out of that gravity well. And then we're kind of left back into our skirmish here. We do have the boss kind of picking us here. But uh, I think for the first time in any of these fights, our repost just decides to go out for lunch there and doesn't activate. Uh, so we end up just taking the uh, maelstrom to the face there. But dripping right back into it, we run back down and uh, find him again. This time we managed to land the Repost into his heavy attack and uh, negate a ton of the damage from that gravity well, force him to go back into a retreat and we time the Calamity perfectly for that first hammer stun, but he follows up with the shock wave and then we do get caught. Um, but just trying to play patient, we again look for that higher percentage Repost and we land it, put in a ton of damage in that trade and we have him very, very low on the back foot here and kind of forced to retreat. We jump down and he catches us in a beautiful animation there with the hammer stun. Lands the shockwave as well and puts in a really, really good amount of damage into us. But we land the parry into his shockwave there. Put in a uh, ton of damage back. And we uh, are just doing a really, really good job of trading damage uh, each time we kind of get into an encounter here. Uh, we get caught in the gravel. We don't have the parry, so we just evade out of there. Um, land the parry on that hammer stun. Get a uh, beautiful, beautiful read on it and be... Uh, are able to finish out the kill with parry there. This build has actually like surpassed my expectations. Um, I really wanted something, a setup to be able to fight against bruiser builds and um, is doing more than that. So I'm actually really, really happy so far, but jumping into the next fight here, we get the gravity well out and turn the aggression back onto him and uh, force him back into a really, really good retreat. Um, but getting into a little mixer here or a little brawl he uh, manages to win the trade um and put us onto a pretty low amount of health we do a really really good job of reacting with the calamity though on the shockwave and uh kind of just go back into that brawl but we land the skyfall to get the rends and i'm going to go ahead and just switch to that rapier to see if i can land the combo with the rends but he's doing a lot better job this time of uh putting in damage we land the repost on the hammer stun there but he follows up with the shockwave and uh kind of uh, resets the fight there and uh, stops our momentum. Calamity counter coming in so clutch so many times there. I try to go for the guard point block, but we are very, very low on stamina, so he ends up breaking our guard. Um, with no repost, no evade, we are kind of just forced to uh, use up all of our stamina there to get out of that gravity well. He lands the um, shockwave into the heavy, so we're put on a really, really bad situation right now in this fight. I'm trying to do what I can to uh, get some health back and uh, avoid some damage. We land the parry during the maelstrom there and uh, manage to put a little bit of damage back into him. But um, I need to play a little bit careful here because we can get caught in one combo here. Um, but with the gravity well out, it looks like he just has to go for a little bit of a retreat and a reset. Uh, we avoid the hammer stun again, but he does a good job of following up with that shockwave every time now. And uh, after avoiding a little bit of that maelstrom damage, I'm trying to see if I can actually just uh, find some damage with the rapier here. Um, we have him a little bit below half health. The gravity well is out, so I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can play the aggression this time. Um, I don't want to see if I can give him a chance back into this fight. We land the Tondo. Um, he does get health potion, but we uh, avoid both of the stuns this time 
and uh, just stick on the rapier and try to see if you can put some damage in. Do a really, really good job of finding that repost there through the shockwave. Get him a very, very low. Let me follow up with that relentless rush for a beautiful, beautiful fight there. Now, just as smooth as those fights can go, with a couple of mistakes, uh, you can just as easily go down. Um, the last couple of fights we end up having here, he jumps right back onto us. We do a good job of avoiding the grab wall there, um, but we end up getting caught in two back-to-back -back stuns. Take a hammer bop to the head there. Seems like he may have switched something around in his build in terms of damage and stuff, but um, we managed to land the repost, uh, and as you can see, our heavy doesn't do as much damage there. Um, and we're taking a lot of damage from him now. I go for the Calamity and uh, immediately dodge backwards, and he follows up with the grab wall. Uh, so we're put in a very, very bad situation. We go for the repost, and I think I actually missed the elbow there, and uh, he's able to just track us down with the cleave of that great sword, and uh, just as easily as we're able to win those fights, we uh, get taken out because of how many mistakes we end up making there. And then last but not least, we run into him one last time here. And uh, we try to go ahead and open up with a Relentless Rush to see if we can put in some aggression with the uh, offensive stance on the Greatsword. But he follows up with a Gravel, so we kind of just go back to neutral. We find the Calamity there to block the Shockwave. Land the Tondo. Also do a good job of avoiding uh, the Shockwave, but we kind of throw a bunch of our cooldowns there. Um, so we're going to be, again, kind of back to a little neutral state here. Um, we find the hit with the Greatsword, but he lands that Hammer Stun. And uh, is able to put in a pretty good amount of damage onto us. Um, my parry literally came up a split second after we took that hit there. So um, I was trying to bank on being able to land it there. Uh, but we don't and we end up taking a bunch of damage in that gravel. We managed to put a little bit of damage back onto him. But it looks like he chugged a potion. Um, and he has the ultimate up right now. So uh, we're doing even less damage to him. Um, he's playing super aggressive. And we're trying to see if we can um, find an opening here to uh, get a kill. We land the repost, uh, but I'm not sure. He kind of just walks out of it. And um, again, just following up with that great sword or great axe, excuse me, aggression. We managed to get a pretty good uh, negate with the calamity there. Um, but he is doing a much, much better job of uh, countering our options as we fought a couple of times here. Does a beautiful job of avoiding that parry. Follows up with the great axe uh, charge there and uh, finds the kill on us. So. Um, yeah, I don't think, uh, Rapier is necessarily dead. You just have to, uh, play a lot better. But, as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and have a great day.